The four-day weekend is about to start, so let's kick it off. It's a Wednesday, it's a Friday at the same time. I love it. Wednesday's always my favorite day when it's coupled with the last day of the week. It's even better. It's like a Wednesday on steroids. Chip Patterson, my friend, CBSSports.com, Cover 3 podcast. Before we get into whatever it is we're going to get into, Mm. tell me your 4th of July plan. So, safety first, right? <laughs> Sa- safety first. Are you a fireworks guy? I am not the fireworks guy. Right. My next door neighbor is a fireworks guy. Nobody has and dogs, I guess. And, and there actually is, um, it's cool. I, I lived in a house from 2012 to 2019, moved away. Then when I had two children, needed more space, came back, you know, bu- built it bigger for the children. Right. And none of my neighbors changed. So I came back with kids and all of their kids got older. But um, when COVID hit, especially that summer of 2020, they developed a really cool relationship with each other, all those different families and a lot of outdoor play. Sure. And apparently an epic 2020 fireworks show (laughs) in the middle of the street. (laughs) And the tradition has continued. And last, and look, the place where they shoot them off is right outside my house. So I've got no choice here. You know, like, you're going to be involved. But, you know, safety first. But we'll be doing uh, 4th of July. Um, we'll be doing 4th of July fireworks uh, in the neighborhood. Then head down to Pinehurst for Friday and Saturday to enjoy oh. the festivities in the village. Oh, very, very nice. Very nice. Any other uh, any other plans in the village of Pinehurst? Are, we, boys, get, are we getting out onto, uh, I don't know, uh, CCNC? What, what are we doing? Well, listen, we might go hit up Thistle Dew. You know, okay. the 18-hole putting course with my four-year-old. <laughs> uh, you know, just pop, pop into the we, – we have to sometimes take a break at the turn of the 18-hole yes. putting course to go get uh, peanut butter and jelly from the 91st hole. Gosh, take that's a great. Break and then then come back out. But, um, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I, Chase loves to be out there and just see everybody else. He feels like a golfer even Good as he's him. just – putting course so we, we we'll try to get that in if it's not too hot he's probably a good putter because you know four-year-olds have no fear uh, mm, yeah <laughs> also no uh respect for the rules or decorum rules rules <laughs> Mike, <laughs> jack's gonna be 16 he still puts out of turn he still st- walks all over my line we'll get we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll get him well, out well, of that Walking all over the line, picking the ball up and dropping it four inches from the cup for your second shot yeah uh, uh, all of it it's right there all right, let's uh, let's let's try to be serious. We're not going to be serious. We never we're never that serious. But uh, let me ask you this question. We'll start here. Three weeks from today, actually three weeks from Monday, for uh, those people who are in uh, three weeks from Monday. Yeah, uh, the commissioner speaks. Jim Phillips in Charlotte, ACC Media Days. What are we talking about? Three weeks from today in Charlotte, Florida State, Florida State, Florida State, on the field, Florida State. Off the field, Florida, Florida State. State. College football playoff, Florida State. Can we relitigate what happened in December? Florida State. I mean, but back in the day, what did we say? Talking about Knowles. Right. You know? And and it's gosh, they love it. It, it makes me uncomfortable thinking that the commissioner and Florida State are both on day one. Like, because that's the other thing is the other interesting storyline that you would have would be the Clemson Tigers, right? Sure. First time in a decade that they did not win 10 games in a season. A 4-4 four and four conference record. Something that is an anomaly when you look at much of the Clemson football for the last 15 years. But they're all the way at the end of the week. You right. know, you got you got to get through a whole lot of SMU and Syracuse <laughs> before you're going to get all the way to even Clemson and North Carolina and NC State there at the end of the week. So right there, that Monday, it is going to be Florida State, Florida State, Florida State, future of the ACC, is Florida State a part of it? Um, I do not envy uh, Commissioner Phillips, Dr. Commissioner Phillips, um, for uh, for what he is going to be facing in terms of the line of questioning when it comes to that commissioner's forum. Yeah, that is uh, the the Q&A part of that is going to be interesting. He is, uh, again, I've said this so many times, He is one of the nicest human beings ever. I have so much respect for him as a man. Um, I just, man, he, this is, he could not be in a worse spot because he's got to defend, not, he's not defending the indefensible, right? It's not like the ACC has done anything wrong here. Uh, But 
because the league just doesn't have access to the monies that the Big Ten and the SEC have, he's put in a position of, like, defending a league that doesn't really need to be defended, mostly because Florida State and Clemson, uh, and I'm sure there are others who would like to make more money, but really more so Florida State, has outwardly been hostile. I mean, I think Clemson's kind of uh, just operating sort of, yeah, this is what we'd like and we might go do it, but Florida State's been like, you know, F everybody uh, throughout this whole process. Um, I am curious how that arrogance is going to play. This upcoming week, because I've I've experienced it. We certainly experience it online. Uh, they all believe that the ACC is intentionally holding them back. Uh, if that's the case, man, just go to court. Just go to court and win. But I don't really believe that Florida State's case is in any way strong enough to take a chance in court. They have to get a settlement. I don't think they're going to get one. Well, well, all right, look, I do think we need to separate the tenor and the conversation from Florida State fans online from what's happening in the courtrooms from the day-to-day function of Florida State Athletics. I, yeah, those are all different. I wasn't just talking about Florida State fans. Right, online. but the but Michael Alford even, um, you know, the, the table was set at the spring meetings, which were very cordial. You know, I mean, it's just that's uh, that Danny Cannell was there, Cover 3 podcast co-host, and he said, I was stunned <laughs> at how normal Everything was. And Danny's in a tough spot. Nobody's carried the flag for the ACC more than Danny. True. True. I have, look, he's, uh, he's, oh, I, I don't know. Has he carried the flag for the ACC or was he just the one that was, um, calling shenanigans on the, on the SEC love fest? Was yes. He, was, 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 I'm <laughs> saying yes to both. <laughs> but he, I think that from, you know, uh, athletic director Michael Alford, head coach Mike Norvell, like they really can go about their business of we are focused on the 2024 football season. You know, we are here for the right. 2024 football season. And these are the things that we're trying to do. But, you know, Mike Norvell, he, he, he really can't, it is a waste of his energies mm -hmm. to try to think about what's happening in the courtroom. Oh, yeah. And so I, I think that because we do have that separation, you know, Jim Phillips is going to say, you know, well, there's a, there's a legal team. We are defending, mm -hmm. um, you know, we are defending one of our primary documents that binds us all together, but that's not what I am thinking about all the time. I'm trying to keep moving things forward. It is a waste of Jim Phillips' time. It is a waste right. of Michael Alford's time, of Mike Norvell's time. The principal players that will be in Charlotte that are involved with the court cases and, and things like settlements and will you win, like, they are not going to be speaking. And that, so, that would be awesome, I, wouldn't it? I, th I think that... <laughs> That, like, the will you settle and all those things, I, I just don't think that not much air is going to be given. That's what they the should do. If the ACC really wanted to have a fun time, they would bring in a team of legal esper experts. They would bring Michael McCann in from Sportico, right? We have we talk to legal people all the time about this when uh, when we have, like, uh, like yeah, okay, let's talk about it today. We'll bring in, like, David McKenzie was on earlier this week to talk about the uh, the the lawsuit and all that would be hysterically fun, um, riveting conversation for people, even if most of us don't truly understand it. Let me ask you about Florida State on the football field with DJ Uyunglele mm -hmm. back in the league. I think that adds a little bit more spice to ACC football this year. Without a doubt. Um, the, his exit from Clemson, do you remember some of the comments that he had about Clemson football? I don't. I don't, but I'm sure they were fantastic. When he landed um, at Oregon State, right? He had some. He had some pointed comments about you know, feeling like he wasn't really being used correctly, feeling like there, you know, wasn't he wasn't really put in the kinds of position to succeed. I'll, I'll dig up the exact quotes okay. before we get to media days, but you no, know, he he had some criticisms and criticisms that are not different from some of the criticisms that. Uh, a lot of people have had of Clemson's offense in terms of, you know, not really adapting to the personnel that you have and maybe trying to fit a little square peg round hole at times, or maybe even with your recruiting practices, the kinds of players that right. you've tried to get at certain positions, potentially trying to replicate previous successes. But I will say that the expectation inside Florida state, and I apologize if I've said this before, but my understanding is that at, inside Florida State, 
they are not looking for DJU to take another step. They are not looking to unlock right. something magical in DJ Uyunglele. I think that I think they like Brock Glenn, their young uh, quarterback. I think they like Luke Cromanoke, uh, a true freshman. So who they just DJU might not, might not even be the guy. No, that he's a bridge, and that oh, so okay. many times in the development of a college football roster, especially when you're trying to compete for championships, sometimes. You just need that experienced bridge, somebody who can go out there and play within themselves and execute. You're not going to put too much on his plate. You're going to try to allow him to let everyone else be good. I mean, I don't know if you remember, but you pulled together, I mean, Mike Norvell, yet another like 20 player transfer right. class. <laughs> well, guess what? Like five of them came from Alabama. And I expect at least three of them to be significant players. Roy Dale Williams at the running back position, Malik Benson at the wide receiver position, the, the whole like Tuscaloosa South jokes that were going on sure. in, in the early portal days. Like that is why DJU can just needs to get in there and set those skill players up to be successful. There are still questions about this team in general, but it's one of the best rosters in the ACC. It is a team that is rightly one of the top picks to win the ACC, but it is not because of DJ Uyunglele. And at Florida State, they are not asking to all of a sudden see DJU take another step. The player who it was in a top three in his recruiting class with Bryce Young and CJ Stroud, that was the top three mm -hmm. quarterbacks in his recruiting class, and he's still playing college football. You're not asking him to all of a sudden take the jump to Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud levels. You're just asking him to be the best fifth-year DJU that he can be. I wanted to move on to something else, but there's so many things about the DJU, the way you've just described it. To me, he's more like, I don't know how other people look at looked at Jordan Travis last year, but I looked at him as somebody like, just just drive the car, keep it on the road. It's really, let everybody else do all the work. But just keep it on the road. If we can do that, and he certainly has the ability to make plays, and I think DJU uh, certainly can do that. My recollection was that at Flo at Clemson, uh, they thought he was going to be this super dynamic runner, and really he wasn't. He's more. He was more of a thrower. He just didn't have the what to throw to. That certainly didn't help. I mean, again, uh, my recollection of these things is not nearly as good not even in the same galaxy as yours, Chip Patterson. But I am looking forward to that. Let me ask you real quick, because I wanted to get to at least one other thing. Uh, and, look, we all have uh, burgers and dogs to throw on the grill. Uh, is Virginia Tech coming back? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, of all the things that the ACC could, could hear, yes, it would be nice if Miami showed up, but at this point they're a sideshow. One of the most important parts of ACC football would be Virginia Tech coming back and being a player in the upper, we have so many teams in the league now, uh, upper 15% of the conference. How many teams is that now? That would be like almost three. A uh, top five. Let's just say a top five. Virginia, I mean, Virginia Tech being in the mix. Has to be. To play for a conference title yes. at the start of November. That's sort of my always my my line in the sand. When we start those critical final three or four conference games of the year, are you mathematically in the mix and are you realistically in right. the mix? And I think the answer for Virginia Tech on both cases is yes. Wow. The buzz comes from something that looks like it is being built the right way. And I know it's only year three, but... Year one, you go out, and it doesn't look good. Only three yeah. wins, and the team is just, like, decimated. Justin Fuente did a complete disservice Oof. with the way that he treated the transfer portal and the roster-building process. Well, Brent Pry did something that was so impressive in that he went out and he got a bunch of transfers to help him in year two, which would be last season, and then they kept them. This is a group that returns tons of production, some of the most pr returning production in the ACC. And what happened last year? They go from three wins to seven wins, but it's not just that. They won five of their final seven games, and every single win last year for the Hokies was by 17 points or more. When Virginia Tech won, they weren't getting lucky. 
they were beating the pants off the opponent. <laughs> and that is the sign of a group that is getting better, of a group that is learning how to win and a group that can take the next step. Their quarterback, Kyron Drones, is maybe – one of the best quarterbacks in the ACC. Uh, I mentioned that some of their like talented wide receivers, mm -hmm. defensive line guys that were transfers last year, now their second year in the program. The coaching staff has stayed together. There were players that they were getting sniffs from other programs, and Virginia Tech was able to retain it. I talk about this all the time. When it comes to the transfer portal, sometimes roster retention is right. as important as trying to go to the portal and get new players to add to your roster. When you're bringing back everybody, when you finished the year strong, when you took that great step in year two, that's why there's a lot of buzz for Virginia Tech going into this year, as well as a very, very favorable schedule where if you can take care of business against Rutgers, no, not Rutgers, doesn't count for the AC. If you can take care of business against Miami and Georgia Tech, if Virginia Tech can take care of business against Miami and Georgia Tech, then they are in the mix for a spot in the ACC title game. I'm here for that. I am here for Virginia Tech being a player again in this league. I think they add a ton to it. The the passion, the Thursday nights at Lane Stadium, let's get more of it. Uh, I think the ACC needs their football brands to be good because that makes everybody else good. It it just the, this is the like the real rising tide lifts all boats when the re when your football brands can add something to the mix it makes everybody better uh so i will close on this you know we like to just throw in something about golf it's a long holiday weekend i hope everybody gets out there and plays at least nine holes someday or goes to the putting course uh so when rory mcelroy meets the media for the next time Scottish Open, right? That'll be the I think next time. So. I mean, I don't know that he's playing. Is the Irish Open this week, too? Uh, Scottish Open is next week. It's a joint uh, PGA Tour, DP World Tour event and anyway. He's, also the, he's the champ, so I think he's showing up as the... Well, he's definitely... Yeah, he'll definitely play that. He's always going to play the Scottish Open so he can get some uh, competitive rounds under his belt before the following week at Troon. What's that press conference going to be like? I think that he will, with all the time... To prepare for it i think he will be very measured and i think that he will offer um i i think he will offer a very human look i mean one thing that rory does that wins over so many in the golf world is let you in right and i think he will let you in on one of the lowest emotional moments of his career uh-huh and i think you're going to come out of that press conference feeling for him and if you were angry about the way he handled it, you will not feel that. And if you had sympathy for him in that moment, then that will only be deepened. I, I expect that when Rory McIlroy returns, he hit that press conference will be fine. If he is in the last group or the penultimate group <laughs> at Prune on the 71st or 72nd hole. I'm telling you. Might be different feeling. I don't know. I was just, I, you know, Monday of that week, like, I, so much happened. I mean, Monday of that week, he got undivorced. <laughs> that should make, that should free your brain. I, well, I just, I just, that's what I'm talking about. Like the roller coaster that he was on all throughout that week. And, you know, he goes really low Thursday and kind of gives a couple back and not really a great Friday and just sort of everything all packed into it. Of course, culminating with the poor play on the and poor decision making on the final four holes. I just, I just, I, I just think there was too much weight. It I keep, just, I keep waiting. Heavy. I keep waiting for the news item. Rory McIlroy and Harry have parted ways. I keep waiting for that. No, you want no, I listen. I I it's not going to happen. Mm -mm, no, because he needs a caddy who's shorter than him. He can't. <laughs> he can, Rory Rory can't be with one of them Ted Scotts. It only makes him look more like a wee little lad. He is like a wee I, little lad. Who cares? I, I know he's a wee little lad, but I'm saying when he's with Harry, it is not accentuated as much. I'm trying to think how wee he my, is. My man Mike Hicks is under. Uh, is like five nine. That's that's okay. You can't. I mean, you can't be six four. Right, you can't be six four and caddy. You can't be like Damon. What's the guy's name who caddied for Zach Johnson? He was a big dude. Uh, anyway, Chip Patterson, happy America's birthday to you and yours. And I'll talk to you next week.